Hi there, everyone. Let me see if I can get into a little bit better lighting if I back up a little. Hi, everyone. I'm Susan Smith here in my studio, Stitched by Susan. I'm just waiting for a couple of more people to get on before we dive in. I've got my coffee in hand, ready to get some quilting done this afternoon. Coffee is so good. Giving it a couple more seconds. Oh, look, I'm getting a notification that I'm live. Join now. <laughs> YouTube is so funny sometimes. Well, there's a few of you on, so we'll get started. So once again, I'm Susan Smith. You're in my studio, Stitched by Susan. And today I was gonna take a few minutes and talk about tools that I use in my studio that are not- <gasps> I can't wait to get out of here. Not marketed for quilting, but- I'm right into my shower. New Dial with Hydroclean Complex and Vitamin E cleanses deep that is gentle on skin. Dial up your day. Let's do this. We handcraft every stream. Okay, are we still on? I hope so. Okay, I don't know. I had some other sound playing on my phone there for a second. Anyway, forgive me. Now there's a whole bunch of you on, so let me start again. I'm Susan Smith. You're in my studio, Stitched by Susan. And I am planning to come on YouTube for a little while live each day, hopefully for the whole month of April, but for sure through about the 18th or 20th. And we'll just see how topics go and how many more things we want to chat about. So I would be so happy if you would um, chime in at any point during the live or afterwards with ideas that you have for short little topics that we could talk about. And be aware too that I'm just doing this on my iPhone. I'm not wearing a microphone. I don't have a close-up camera on my machine. So this won't be specifically quilting. This is just casual chatting about light topics in the quilting studio. So today I thought I would talk a little bit about some of my tools that I use that are not quilting specific. So they're not marketed for quilting, um, but I use them and find them very useful. And in most cases, they were either things that I have in my home already, in my cupboards, my cleaning cabinet, what have you, or things that I found at my local hardware store. And they just proved to be very useful tools in my studio. And my middle name is Frugal. So, <laughs> so it just, it makes me happy to find things like that that kind of serve a dual purpose and they can really serve a purpose in my studio. So let's see. Um, looks like lots of you are here, so let's let's get going. Um, let me mention, go ahead and type in questions as you think of them throughout the broadcast and I will check the comments from time to time. So whether you have questions about what I am saying or even if you have tips of your own, tools that you have found to be handy. And some of these tools I have learned from other quilters and there's often some really fresh ideas out there. You know, necessity is the mother of invention, so when you need something to hold your pins, you find something, right? So. Let's get started with a few of these fun tools and I've got them laid out here. I feel a bit like a surgeon with my tools laid out on the table. Um, the first one, which I've kind of got propping up my table, but I'll show you anyway, is this yardstick right here at the end. And I use that at either end when I've got my clamping straps on to the edges of the quilt and I need to hold them up a little bit so that the long arm doesn't bump into them at the edges. That happens when you've got, you know, not very much excess at the edges sometimes. They tend to sag just a little bit, even if they're lightweight, they're a little bit of weight, and your long arm nose will bump into them. So a yardstick or really anything that's long and straight that will go across the throat of your machine will do it. So, you know, those inexpensive curtain rods that you can extend, those work. You know, any long stick, if you have a shorter space, maybe even a painter's stick would work. So anything that will cross that expanse and hold those um, tension straps up is really helpful. My tray, and let me get another one to show you. Hang on a sec. My tray is a plexiglass sheet. Can you see this? So mine, it looks enormous on camera, but it's really not. It's 18 inches across and 24 the long way. And this is just eighth inch acrylic plexiglass, again, from the local hardware store. If you can't find it there, Amazon does sell it too. But your hardware store will often either carry smaller sheets or will cut them for you. So this size for me is really a, a good size for laying across the throat of my machine. If you have a smaller machine, maybe you want one that's 12 inches by 30. You know, whatever is efficient for you. But here's a couple things to note. I like to use dry erase markers on mine. You can also use wet erase, but then you'll need something to mist them with water or a rag, but either will work. And I always put some kind of 
um, border around them. So in this case, I have duct tape and it's on one side of the plexi so that I know what side is up. The side that I draw on gets residue from the markers, no matter what kind of marker you use. And you never wanna put that residue side down on your quilt surface. So this helps you to know which side is up. And it also provides a little bit of a barrier so you can't inadvertently draw off the edge onto your quilt because that is a disaster. So plexiglass sheets, super helpful. I use them when I want to practice a design I maybe haven't quilted in a while and I just wanna kinda of get that muscle memory in place again. I use them when I'm trying to decide the scale, like how large or how small I want to quilt the design because you can lay this right on your quilt surface, doodle your quilting design and say, oh boy, that's gonna be way too much quilting. Let's open that up a bit or vice versa. That doesn't cover it enough. I need to make it a little smaller. It helps to work that out. And if you're doing custom quilting, it helps, you know, say you've got a triangle shape and you're not quite sure what you want to quilt in it. You can try different things out on this. I even use them because I quilt for clients. I'll use them to draw out sometimes more complex or larger or multiple custom designs on several sheets, take photographs, send them to the client, and it proves to be a kind of consulting tool, which one do we like and so forth. Okay, let's scroll back through comments before we go further. And I'd love, by the way, if you type in uh, where you're tuning in from. Many of you are, I've got you trained already. Cassandra, hello in Texas. My husband, hey, it's you. Sandy Boysvert, hi Susan, Linda, first time live. I watch you constantly now, but I'm in a movie waiting for it to start. Good news, the replay will always be there for you. Of course, when it's not live, you have to put up with ads. If you catch them live, there's no ads. So just saying. Kim from Chase, BC. Thea actually used mine for the first time yesterday, so handy. Yes, aren't they great, Thea? Love them. Mary Ellen, you can also use a poster frame. Ah, for the, to frame off and tape the edge. Oh, I see what she's saying. You can purchase a poster frame, take the frame off and tape the edge. Now I got it, okay. And I'm sorry if the camera wobbles. Whenever I touch it, it wobbles on the, on the tripod, darn it. Okay, let's see, I've lost some. Uh, Shelby, happy Sunday evening. I'm something. She'll get the rest of it. Oh, I'm looking forward. Jean White, Kingston, Ontario. What time are you going to come on every day? Great question, Jean, but I don't have a specific time because I'm doing quite a bit of quilting over the next couple of weeks and I'm just going to try and get on when I think I'm uh, working on something that will interest you. Like today's is tools, but it's also Sunday. So this morning I was off to church and doing other things. So it's not going to be the same time every day. If you click the bell on YouTube, it will notify you when I go live. And I always try to schedule it at least 10 or 15 minutes in advance so that you can see it coming. Um, by and large, I think I'll try and do mornings, but I just don't know for sure. Uh, let's see. Mary Ellen, take pictures of your ideas and crowdsource. Absolutely, that's a great idea to get input. Quiltsy Linda in Nebraska, little one from N Vermont, Barbara from Sisters, that's not too far away, Tracy in Iowa, Michelle in Indiana, Beth from Alberta, Canada, Snickerbuckle watching in Idaho, Linda in Kansas, Winona in Ohio, cool. Yes, Dave is answering for me. He's the stitched by Susan with the little crown. It's a surprise what time I'm on. Little one, my husband actually saw that you were live and called me to watch. Oh, thank him for me. That's very considerate of him. <laughs> and Wendy Hale, good afternoon. Always lovely to see you. Okay, let's see. What else are we going to talk about? This one many of you probably know, and look at it. It's stuck to my table. You probably know this one, lint roller with the peelable sticky paper. You know, use this for removing stray threads, certainly for pet hair. A lot of quilts come through my studio that do have pet hair and just batting lint, whatever the case may be, but really helpful. Uh, painter's tape, I bet you knew I was gonna say this one. It's one of my favorite tools. And in fact, the quilt that I have loaded today, I'm going to be quilting with a fan design, kind of similar to Baptist fan, but a freehand version, so a little bit simplified. And this is how I'm gonna mark my rows. I'll measure, I think I'm gonna do them three and a half inches. I'll lay a strip of tape all the way across the quilt, stuck to the batting at both ends, do my quilting, lift the tape, move it down and proceed. And one piece of tape will do my whole quilt. I love Blue Painter's Tape. It is a great guide for many reasons. One other thing you might not have thought to use it for, um, and I think I did a reel on this just a couple of weeks back. I ran into a quilt where there was a little portion of a seam coming undone, and actually first I got my hopper foot stuck in it and had to undo it, and oh my goodness sakes, that was a disaster. But after I got my hopper foot disentangled, 
I didn't want to take the time to sew it by hand, so I just took a little piece of painter's tape, pulled that seam together, stuck it down with tape, and quilted over it, pulled the tape off, and then I marked it with a tape and a little fabric sort of flag, sent it back to the owner with a note that she would want to hand stitch that down. It was a fairly long piece of seam that was coming undone. So you never know when this will come in handy. This is another favorite. This is courtesy of my son. These are food skewers, little wooden skewers. I'll move my hand so you can see both ends. I use them to keep my bobbins with my thread. Not every quilter does this, but I like to use matching bobbin thread to my top thread whenever I can, or at least close to a match. I keep about mm, 50 or 55 colors in my studio. Again, not everyone does, but for me, I like to keep my bobbin then with my spool, or if I have two bobbins left over, and this is a great way to do it. Stays on there. Okay, what else? School chalk, fancy, fancy stuff we use here, and a school sharpener. There are many um, marking utensils out there for quilting, and certainly school chalk is not the most precise, so I do keep other marking tools here as well. My phone keeps going to sleep, so I keep having to reach up and wake it up again. <laughs> anyway, um, but I do, I do like to use this, say I'm quilting you know, a feather spray and it does not have to be precise or I'm quilting a spineless feather and I'm not going to quilt the spine but I want to know where it is so I can lay my feathers on it evenly. I'll use this chalk and I do sharpen it with the pencil sharpener you know, to keep it as accurate as I can but it's not a fine, fine marking tool. It's a general marking tool but it's extremely inexpensive. It brushes off of fabric easily. It leaves no residue or chemicals in your quilt. So it's a good choice for some of those simple markings. You do need, can you see that? You do need a, mar um, a sharpening end that is thicker than a pencil because chalk is thicker. So, but this is just an El Cheapo sharpener. Works for my chalk. Okay, here is one of my favorites. You guys might not believe this. Ruler. Sharpie, permanent Sharpie actually. I mark my rulers. So examples of when I might do this, if I've got a six inch increment and I wanna divide that into five equal segments, I only have to do that complicated math one time and then I literally can mark with my Sharpie and I usually do it on the top of the ruler so it won't touch my quilt fabric. I will mark my locations on my ruler. Another place I might use it is if I've got some repeating lines that are it's easy to get confused and forget where. Um, I've done a couple quilts that have kind of uneven stripes on them, but um, a measured spacing. So, you know, I've got five inches and then a quarter inch and then an inch and a half and then a quarter inch and then a half inch and then, right? And when you go to lay those down on your quilt, the chances of you remembering and getting them right is slim, at least for me. So I jot them into place on my ruler, leave them there for the duration of the quilt. So I can just set my ruler down, using my, not using this, but using my quilt marking tool, drop those marks on my fabric. And when I'm all done, just these little cloth um, alcohol swabs will take it off. Or if you don't have these, you know, rubbing alcohol on a cotton swab would work too, but I have these in my house. So that will just, that permanent, permanent Sharpie marker comes right off. So it's a real time saver and, a, and an error saver for sure. Uh, let's see, I think that's about it, except I forgot to mention my batting, which I use on my plexiglass sheet is my eraser because I use a dry erase marker. So this is my eraser. And when it gets black and dingy, I just toss it and get another batting scrap break because we've all got those. Okay, let's buzz back through some comments. Where did I finish reading? Okay. Edie is saying, I wrote top in permanent marker. So I would imagine, Edie, that was on your plexiglass sheet, right? Because clearly if you turned it upside down, it would read backwards, P-O-T, but backwards. So yeah, that helps you know what the top is. It is very important to know what the top is for sure. Um, Lynn in Indiana, Luda in Connecticut, Edie's in North Dakota. Barbara Bowman is asking Sisters Oregon. Yes, I'm curious about that too, and if so, yeah, it's not very long until your fabulous quilt show and I'll be there this summer. Woohoo! first time for me. Lynn is saying, Chom Chom is a pet hair remover without the paper sold in pet stores or Amazon. Oh, good to know. That might be a really great thought. I think my quilts are about equal, you know, pet hair slash thread bits. So I wonder if it works on those little thread bits as well or if you still need the sticky one for thread. 
Um, did dum dum Sandy, I've been waiting for a bobbin organizer. Fantastic. My first thought was um, golf tees, which also would work, but they're a little more expensive. So these little wooden bits, I mean, 50 of them might have been $3. I don't know, not very much. I'm having such a hard time with the comments. I'm sorry. You see me poking, poking at the screen probably. Norma, watching from LaSalle, Manitoba. Lots of Canadians here today with me. Wendy used your ruler trick earlier today. What a time saver. It is. And I got that from another quilter. Might have been Beth Ann Nemish. I'm not sure, but I, I like to collect tips. That's what I collect at my house. Little one, speaking of ruler work, I use skateboard grip tape on the back on all my rulers. Never had one move yet. That's a great tip. I don't have a grip tape on the back of my rulers. This one, which you guys have probably seen me use lots of times that has the handle, I don't seem to have trouble with it shifting on me. So I figure if it isn't broke, don't fix it. So I have not put ruler tape on them, but maybe I just don't know what I don't know. <laughs> Candace from Georgia. Lynn, Chom Chom does work on thread or hair. Good to know, we'll have to look that one up. <laughs> My husband, hello from upstairs. I have coffee ready when you're finished. Woo, I might make this short, you guys. <laughs> Anyway, that's the end of my tips that I could think of today that are, as I said, not quilting specific, but really useful in the quilting studio. One more I might show you. I'm gonna tip the camera so you can see my lights. Do you see those bright lights above me? Dave recently hung them and that's why you're kind of seeing my eyes in shadow because they're really, really bright. They are so nice for working and they are relatively inexpensive shop lights from Costco. And they're just on a pull chain and oh my goodness, they are so incredibly bright. Now my machine, I'm running a Bernina Q24. Her name is Stella. You can see her over my shoulder. She has really great LED lights over the machine and over my quilting area, but I'm often quilting in the dark, early morning or evening, and I like to have my room more brightly lit. I can see things like my design board when I'm four feet away from my quilting head. So I love having the bright lights. So they are super, super helpful. Maggie in Miami, Donna in Tennessee. Thea is asking, are you enjoying your new machine? Is it the upgrade you were hoping for? You know, I think it is, Thea. It's, it's a different machine than the one I had. I, I used to drive a Gamel, um, and I've done hundreds of quilts on Gamels. I had two of them, and I really enjoyed them. They are industrial, they are hardworking, they are easy maintenance, I love that. The Bernina is a little, a little closer to your sewing machine in that it's quieter. It doesn't have that industrial sound. Um, and it like the, the presser feet on it are interchangeable with your sewing machine. So are the needles. So I love that. I can try out different needles and do fun precision things. Cause it's kind of, I don't know, you're closer in. It all threads right at the front of the machine. So it's just a little bit more like your sewing machine in that way. And mine is a hair shorter than my gamma was two inches. I'm not finding that to be a problem at this point. I, I, in fact, I don't really notice it. And they weigh about the same. So in terms of what it feels like driving it free motion, very much the same. The Bernina drives like a Cadillac, uh, makes beautiful stitches. I'm playing around with some different kinds of thread and things like that. So that's really fun. Okay, let's keep looking. Donna, I have those same ones over my long arm, love them, yeah. I think probably someone recommended those to me too, you know, the shop lights, because they're just, they're a pretty natural and clean light um, and just really, really good for a few dollars, really good. Yep, few people have shop lights. Quilty Linda is saying with daylight bulbs. I suspect mine are daylight too, although Dave did it, so I'm not 100% sure. Please show the magnets you use up close. Great idea, Sue, I sure will do that. They're right here behind me, give me a second. Here are my magnets, okay? So here, how, is, it's 18 inches long. That's the back of it. It's dark, so it's hard to see it. But see, there's a magnet inside there. And the front is just the steel. And here's the end of it. Can you see that? It's kind of a channel with this magnet inside it. These two are from the local hardware store. You can get them for, like shops use them for hanging tools, pliers and screwdrivers and so forth on them because they're a strong magnet. Kitchens use them for knives and I use them for these front rails on my machine. So if you want more demonstrations of how they work, on most of my YouTube Live and Unscripted episodes, I'll show the using of them and I'll talk about the fact that I have tweaked how I load my quilts in order to not have multiple layers of fabric on this rail so that my magnet sticks. 
And of course you do have to have magnetic rails. They obviously won't work on a wooden rail. And a lot of quilters will recommend because they have a pre-drilled hole right here. And everyone I've ever seen does have the pre-drilled hole. You can put doorknobs or drawer pulls on those for pulling them with. Um, I found that mine kept coming unscrewed and were more of a nuisance than a help. So I've just learned to, you know, tuck my fingers in the ends and pull them off. But that's just me, but you have options. So that's the magnet. We'll just toss that on the floor. <laughs> so I keep enough of those magnets to go nose to tail along every quilt that I have. So like even a queen or a large king size quilt, you know, there can be a bit of space between them, but I think I have five or six of them that I can put on my rails nose to tail. So let's see what else we're getting for comments. Backing up, um, Mary Allen, Amazon carries some very slim LED lights that are really bright. And do you mean for putting on your machine, Mary Allen? I certainly have seen other quilters do that. If their machine doesn't have lighting that they're thrilled with, you can purchase um, LED lights that are like a slim line that are super helpful. Okay, video suggestion. Talk about your quilting journal and what information you put in it about the quilts. Great idea, Cassandra. I will do that, maybe even tomorrow. Thea, yes on the magnets. Using those per Susan's other video, they're great. I do love them. I do love them. Sue Hansen in Arkansas, thunderstorms here, so I've unplugged and decided to check computer. Oh gosh, thunderstorms, I'm sorry. Donna, got them at Harbor Freight, so did I. Shauna, watching you live. Thanks for having us in your studio. You're welcome. Kay, I have them too. Sue, I use the magnetic bars. If you drop them often enough, you can use the little magnet pieces that fall out. Okay, that's funny. I've never had a piece fall out of one. Just goes to show. Uh, Mary Ellen says no on your ceiling. I'm not sure what she's referring to. Anyway, um, Dave just popped a link in there. Let's talk about that for half a second. On the 15th of April, I've got a free workshop coming up and I've called it, and I know some of you have seen it before, but there is, people enjoy it so much. And this is kind of my mission. It's called Five Myths that Tie Freehand Quilters and Knots. Come in and we'll ignore that. Um, I think that it's just so common for people that want to be quilters to think I can't for various reasons. So I've collected five reasons that I hear the most often and I'm kind of smashing those reasons and saying, this is what's really true. Those are myths, don't believe them. Because I firmly believe that if you want to quilt freehand, you absolutely can learn how to do it. And I would love to show you how. So this workshop is not really a lesson on quilting. It's just a discussion with tons of photos and examples, a discussion of kind of the common misconceptions, like I'm not an artist. Well, I have news for you, I'm not an artist either, but Quilting is about a lot more than being someone who sketches or paints. So I just want to break down those myths. So that free workshop is going to be on April 15th. There will be work play, or replays, I'm sorry, available after it as well if, if by some reason you can't get there live. But April 15, so there is a sign up link in the notes below this episode too. So you can copy paste it from there and it'll ask for your name and email address to sign up and then you'll get some reminders via email and you will get a link for a workbook just before the event happens as well so that you can take notes if you like, have some of your own doodles or pictures in that workbook. So that's coming up again, April 15th. So before we go, I encourage you, if you're enjoying these little lives, like and subscribe. YouTube loves the thumbs up and so do I. And then also if you click on the little bell, you will get notifications and you can choose there what types of notifications you want. So for the purposes of these little lives, just choose to be notified when I go live. And then YouTube will give you a little ping um, whenever I'm getting ready to go live. And I'll try to schedule them a few minutes in advance and I'll try to do them in the mornings for me. I'm on Pacific time, but it is definitely subject to what I'm working on in my studio or what life is holding on that particular day. So let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Sandy, you should do a coffee video, your favorite flavor, how you make it, your favorite edition. Oh, Sandy, that would be a short video. I drink my coffee for the most part, plain and black. So <laughs> I do have a nice brand of coffee grounds that I get via a friend who has a coffee shop. Um, but other than that, I don't, I don't typically do fancy coffees at all. So let's see what else. Uh, Quiltsy Linda, I have another commitment that day. Can we catch a replay? Yes. Everyone who signs up for the workshop will get a notification of the replay and where to find it. And it will be up for some days. So you'll be able to watch that, absolutely. 
And let's see, lots of great tips today. Thank you so much from little one, fantastic. There's Dave, Americano, mostly black, sometimes with the barista's choice of flavor, that's true. Okay, I think that's probably it for today. I'm gonna put all these little bits away and I'm gonna get quilting and try and get this quilt finished yet this evening, I hope. So thanks for joining me today. It's been a real pleasure. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ask YouTube to notify you whenever I'm going live and I will see you again tomorrow. Have a great evening.